in a closet. Despite the many attempts to dehumanize and silence her, they were not successful. Their voice was never silenced. Women during the war in Kosovo were the backbone of their families. There was nothing which could stop them to protect their families. There was nothing at any time which could make them surrender. These women became direct targets of torture, of beating, of sexual violence and abuse. Means used as a weapon of war. Nearly 20,000 of them are estimated to have been raped during the war. This painful part of our history ended with the humanitarian intervention of NATO, with the liberation of Kosovo, with the initiation of building the institutions of Kosovo, with the rebuilding of the new inclusive Kosovo. In 2000, only a few months after the war had ended, I joined the Kosovo police force. I have lived all my life in search of freedom and justice. Now was the time, the moment to take the responsibility and contribute in building a free society. As we start rebuilding the institutions of Kosovo, we were also rebuilding the trust of the people in these institutions. We knew we could earn this trust only by offering security and equal opportunities to everyone, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their gender. During the very first days when I wore the police uniform, I faced with a pleasant surprise. People stopped us to tell us that the image of the women police officers changed their perception of an institution they once feared. We, the women police officers, helped make Kosovo police become one of the most trusted institutions in the country, with the largest number of the women on the service. I feel privileged and proud to have been a member of this service, and the same mission guides me every day. The mission to serve the citizens of my country, to offer them the possibility to live in peace. As I continued my work in service to Kosovo and its citizens, I continue to stumble upon stories of inspiration. In my first days as the president of Kosovo, I met a very special group of the women from a village in Kosovo called Krusha. In this village, almost all the men were killed. The women who returned home after the war were not only left with a burden of an unimaginable pain of loss, but they were also left with the responsibility to hold, to head their household, to secure the livelihood of their families. These women broke every barrier to ensure the survival of their families by taking up roles which were traditionally held by men they were able to transform the destroyed village and convert it into a village of women entrepreneurs. I choose to meet them, to feel the strength that women possess, the strength to move on, to build a better lives for their families. I felt the dedication and determination of a mother to overcome all types of difficulties and obstacles for a better today and for a brighter future for her children. Today, 
our struggles have not ended. Yet, these are stripes of a free country, of a democratic society that wants to better itself. With the declaration of Kosovo an independent and sovereign state, Europe has finally found its peace. For the first time, we are masters of our own fate, and we have sworn to build a different Kosovo. A Kosovo where investment in women shall be an investment in the family and in the prosperity of the whole society. This new era of integration and participation, as never before in the history of mankind, is offering new opportunities for cooperation, where inclusiveness and diversity have become crucial. Around the world, countries and people historically divided or left on the outskirts through means of oppression, social tradition or prejudice are taking their deserved places on the table. The struggle of the women of Kosovo still continue to take their deserved place on the decision-making table, to actively participate in the society, to integrate and play their role in this part of our history, as they have always done. By introducing a 30% quota, the women of Kosovo now represent one-third of Kosovo's parliament. At the At the central level, they have become a part of the decision-making process, leading important sectors. We have a fem female deputy prime minister who is leading the technical dialogue process with Serbia in search for stability for the region. And another woman leading our efforts to join the European Union. These are the two most important political processes for Kosovo. But there is much left for us to do to increase the representation of women at the local level in order to implement the laws which safeguard a democratic society. My dear friends, as you may know, the Republic of Kosovo is only five years old. We have a lot to learn and a lot to share with the world. Women are the pillars of the family and that the progress of the society is directly linked to her emancipation. To accept the diversity as a value that unifies us, that enriches our societies and to build our future upon it. I am proud to be the first female president in the Balkans and the first woman president of Kosovo. In this role, apart from my daily obligations as a president in the service to my fellow citizens, I am committed to inspire and motivate the new generation of girls to play an active role in all the fields of our society. It comes naturally to all of us. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.